Welcome to Boys Episode 163. It's you and me, baby. You and me, baby, ain't nothing but mammals, so let's do it like they do on the Discovery Channel. Do it again now. <laughs> Getting horny now. Huh? That was my favorite line from that song. Getting horny now. Think about it. Mm-hmm. What was his name? What was uh, the it, singer? Bloodhound Gang. Oh, well, uh, shit. He says, he says it in another song. Jimmy C? Jimmy Pop. Jimmy Pop. Yeah. Jimmy Pop on the tour bus mm-hmm. going from Dayton, Ohio up to Minneapolis for the next Bloodhound Gang show. He's got the pen to the pad, getting horny now. And then he puts the pen to his temple and goes, you still got it. Still got it, Jimmy. Got it. Speaking of, speaking of bands, uh-huh. speaking of super exciting, important things. Super exciting 90s bands. We have a huge, huge It's a very huge announcement. Saturday, September 28th, 2019. You're going to mark... mark if you have your phone out, mark your fucking calendar right now. Yep. Okay. So do, swipe up, go over to your calendar, get ready to mark that motherfucker. Because we're doing something cool at the speakeasy. Josh, me, and boys alum Chris Van Dyne, we are doing a Blink 182 tribute show where we will be playing Enema of the State in its entirety. Plus some other hits. Plus a bunch of hits. A bunch of hits. We're also piggybacking off of our friend Ryan Drake. Yeah, man. You know, he throws these legendary, legendary speakeasy 90s aughts dance parties. Yeah. They're huge. They're always big. Yeah. They're always popping. They're always a lot of fun. So we're playing first, mm-hmm. followed right up by Sweet Sweet RD and the DP. Ryan Drake and the dance party. It's going to be, man, I can't, I, I can't even imagine how much fun it's going to be. It's going to be a blast. Like you, you have to come out to this show. Yes. Please mark your calendars again, Saturday, September 28th. It's going to be five bucks. Five we're, bucks. We're, we're keeping it with those late nineties, early two thousands show prices. Yeah. Five bucks, a fiver, a five spot, five greenbacks, five Dollars, just a, just a Lincoln. Toss a Lincoln at, at him at the door. Just toss a Lincoln. I, I, so here's the deal: mm-hmm. we're going under the name Blink Four O Five. Cool stuff, man. It's a simple name. It goes with it. It it works. It does. I'm trying to remember when this idea popped. I was actually thinking that today. Yeah. I I don't. I think it may have started off as like. Our mutual love for that band. Well, let's be honest. You and I have loved Blink-182 since we were in high school. Oh, yeah. Easily. You know, I started with Dude Ranch. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine had Dude Ranch. He let me borrow it. I took it to another friend of mine's house. No, it was on CD. On actual CD, yeah. I took it to another friend of mine's house, and I burnt a copy of it on this ancient external CD burner Mm -hmm. made by Hewlett Packard. Did you Sharpie Dude Ranch on it? You know I did, dude. You know, I did. actually, I think I sharpied the Blink logo from Dude Ranch, which had like a star oh, at the yeah, time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I sharpied that on one side of the CD and then wrote Dude Ranch on the other side. Got to make it official. Wore that CD out. Yeah. Wore it out. You know, you and I were both kind of raised in the Christian punk rock scene. Mm-hmm. So I was listening to a lot of MXPX mm-hmm. at the time. A lot of 90 Pound Wuss. Goaty Hook. A lot of Goaty Hook. Yeah. A lot of Five Iron. Yeah. And you, played, you played in pop punk, uh, pop punk, Christian pop punk band. Yeah. Well, Christians in a pop punk band. My first band was a Christian hardcore band. My second band were Christians in a pop punk band. Mm-hmm. So when I discovered Blink-182, that wonderful Dude Ranch CD, I was hooked. Fast forward a couple years, and in the year 1999, mm-hmm. I was a fucking senior in high school lo and behold their next album was going to be released yeah so guess what that means this year is 20 years, 20 years. of enema of the state yeah if you're if you're still a fan of blink 182 i'm sure you're aware that they're doing a tour right now mm-hmm. playing enema of the state in its entirety plus a lot of other hits and that's exactly what we're gonna do. Yeah. If you don't want to drop the hundred and twenty dollars to go see them in Dallas, get right. the next best thing. If you don't care about Lil Wayne, yeah, come see us. And let's be honest: if you don't care about Matt Skiba being in the band, yeah, 
You, know? you make a better Tom DeLong than Matt Skiba, than Matt Skiba does. <laughs> well, thanks, man. So That's... we've done a couple of full band practices. You and I have been working on the set for a couple months now. Yeah. And I think it's going to be a really good time. So I will be playing bass mm -hmm. and doing all the parts of Mark Hoppus. Yeah. And I'll be doing the DeLong guitar vocals. And I, I guess I never realized it when that record came out that it plays really well to that uh, dual lead singer thing that they yeah, have because it's, it's a it's a mark song then a travis song mark song or sorry mark mark song then a tom song mark song tom so they trade off pretty much the entire album yeah so when we do that set it's like it's an even trade like Absolutely. no one's doing no one's having to do more vocal duties than the other and like wearing their fucking voice out so it works out in the warsh and so here's the deal we're not just going to be standing up there phoning it in it's going to be a real authentic Late 90s, early 2000s, Blink-182 experience. Yeah. We got the gear. Yeah. We got the clothes. Yeah. We got the chops. Oh, yeah. We we had a practice last Sunday, mm -hmm. and it started to click. You know, the first the first run through the set was a little rough. I haven't played in a band in four or five years. Yeah. You haven't played. When's the last show you played? Full uh, Like, full band show. Matt Jewett show, probably about a, a little over a year right. ago. And Chris is about the yeah, same, same time. about a year. Mm -hmm. So we all dusted the cobwebs off, mm -hmm. ran through the set. You and I have been sitting around, we call it couch jamming, yeah. where you'll come over and we'll play through smaller amps to the album, like through my monitors at mm -hmm. home, and we'll go through it. And we're getting all the parts down. We're getting the harmonies down. We're getting the intricacies, the idiosyncrasies, mm -hmm. the synchronicity. We're getting all the small things. Oh, God damn it, Josh. Together. You're right. And down. So we're doing down, this. Down, that's another one. <laughs> Saturday, September 28th at the Speakeasy. Again, get there around 9. It's going to kick off a little after 9. May I suggest something, too? Uh, Ryan always posts on, uh, when he posts these to Facebook or Instagram or whatever, he likes people to dress dress a little 90s. This last one was a fucking, it was the hottest one, like, in temperature-wise. Mm -hmm. So he suggested people kind of go skimpy. Wear some bikinis, some swim swim attire, because it's going to be hot. What we're going to ask is everybody dress like Blink did in the What's My Age Again video. Yes, everybody nude. Everybody naked. No, I want wear exactly what you wore in 1999-2000. Dress like you did in 99-2000. Unless you're really young, because I don't want anybody That's true. showing up in a diaper. Yeah. I mean, I'm talking dicky shorts, black socks, chucks. I'm talking... Ball uh, chain necklaces. Girls, Paul Frank t-shirts. Hurley. A lot of Hurley. All out Jinkos. I mean, let's bring it. I mean, they're back, as yeah. we've discussed. So buy you a $250 pair of Jinkos just to come to this. Let's make... Honest, let's make the Speakeasy $19.99 again for one night. Or forever. And ever. Let's make it last forever. It's going to be really fun, guys. We've been kind of sitting on this for a while. We, I've been super antsy about talking about it. You actually went, you guessed it on another podcast yeah, this on, week. Yeah, I was on uh, Toons Tunes, hosted by Harold Story, and uh, Ryan was a guest on that that I didn't know of. It was going to happen until like a couple of days before. I was like, oh shit, well, since he's there, it's the perfect time to announce it. We we broke the news there, and then you so and I were discussing when when should we drop it on on our show. You're saying that the Cheshire Cat has been let out of the bag on Harold's show, yes. Tunes Tunes podcast. Right. But we're really we're really bringing it home here. We're really announcing it mm -hmm. for our faithful listener and we're super super excited. It's it's going to be so much fun. So you oh. guys mark your calendars. We'll, we're going to plug it on every episode. So if you don't like Blink or you don't like us, bear with us. mm Mhm. But we'd love for y'all to come out. It's going to be a good time. We got some surprises in store. Might even be a giveaway. Mm -hmm. We got some. We got some incentives. We got some real incentives. And we've got what might be the most badass logo by yeah. also boys alum Mike Allen yeah. from the Nims. Yeah, we're, we'll have like shirts and stickers and buttons and stuff. It'll be uh, it'll be fun. We're doing it right. Mm -hmm. And and I must say, I know a lot of people that listen to this know me personally. But I'm a bit of a homebody, so I don't really get out that much. I'm not really a, a boot scooter, mm -hmm. you know, if you will. So I cut my fucking hair for this. You did. I cut my hair off for this so I could get those twisty spikes just right, get my inner hoppus going. And that's the thing I want to make uh, make it fucking clear to you Perfectly guys. Perfectly clear. We, Wendy clear. Wendy clear. Uh, we are, we're taking this shit like super seriously. This isn't just like, yeah, it's just together and let's see how it sounds. Like, yeah. no. We want it to sound as much like the album as possible. I mean, we've dropped money on the gear. 
Uh, We've been researching, watching live videos. Wow, dude, incessantly watching live videos. We're going to offer up some of that classic Blink-182 tween song banter. Yeah. It's going to be wonderful. And I can't wait. Please come. I feel like it's going to be a big sing-along. Mm-hmm. You know, the thing, the re- one of the reasons we chose Enema of the State, A, 20 years, right. perfect perfect time for a, for a celebration. Right. Secondly, if you go back and listen to that record or if you're familiar with it, Every song on that record is great. Yeah. You know, there's some that are better than others, but there's not a skippable track on the album. Not at all. It's a fantastic record that's really held up, stood the test of time, Mm -hmm. and we are honored to perform it for you. Come on out, hang out with the boys, listen to some good tunes, and you know, the Speakeasy is an awesome place, so thank you to the Speakeasy for letting us do this here. Yeah. As well as letting us practice there. Let's just be I'm letting letting the other Cheshire Cat out of the bag. Yeah. (laughs) We're practicing there. It's so awesome. Chris and Josh both work at the Speakeasy in different capacities. Mm-hmm. And we've been practicing up there, you know, when they're closed. And it's just been a real treat. Yeah. A lot, hell of a lot better than squeezing into a tight ass bedroom somewhere. Oh, yeah. And yeah. We're for, and I mean, that's where we're going to end up playing anyway. So yeah. we might as well get the sound nice and tight for you guys. So we want it to be the best show for you guys there. And that's Saturday, September 28th. Uh, get there early. I mean, get there at nine. Get there around nine. Yeah, come get a drink, uh, get some food if you want to get some food. They got the good food. We got that good food. Come hang out. It'll be good. They're doing food specials. They're doing the seven fucking hot dogs. You know, we should we should do that. They We should do a menu. I'll talk I'll oh. talk to Andy about doing a, a burrito, like doing like making some, quote, sombrero burritos. Sombrero. We'll call yeah. it the sombrero. Yeah. And then we got the seven fucking hot dogs. Yeah. And we'll think of some other clever yeah, ones. Yeah. I'm, I'm spent right now. But anyways, we're going to get to the show, but we had to get that out of the way first. Please come. Please, please, no. Come on out. It's going to be an awesome time. We're going to get right to the show, but first, a bit of advertisement. Boyspodcast.com. It's a hub of all things boys. There you will find links to our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, as well as a golden donate button. If you want to help me pay for this fucking Mark Hoppus base, send me a few bucks. All right? Come to the show and send me money. Send Josh money. Yeah, I got two dollars. Josh bought two guitars. (laughs) <laughs> That's how serious we're taking this shit. Very serious. Boys is available on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, YouTube, uh, and on SoundCloud. Have to search us. You all mean lowercase. Spotify. Uh, Spotify, yeah. Sorry. My bad. I said SoundCloud twice. That's okay. I'm so flustered with the joy of playing a set for you guys. Pure excitement. Letting it out for you. So, yeah, on Spotify, search Boys Podcast, all one word, all lowercase. You'll find all of our episodes there. Leave a review on iTunes. Helps us rise up the ranks. Higher than we already are. We're just, I want to be number one. I want to be the best goddamn show on iTunes. Well, right now we're sitting cool on the charts. I checked. Mm-hmm. We're at 182. Hell yeah. So we don't follow <clears throat> don't us. Don't follow us. Don't tell a friend. Just let it stay. Because that's exactly where we want to be. At least till September 28th. That's right. Uh, subscribe, rate, review, share. Uh, the mo- biggest thing I can ask you to do is click. There's going to be a thing on the corner of wherever you're listening to it. Or the dots up on Spotify. And just do share. It's super simple. Text just, it to a friend. That's yeah. guy, guys. Let's guys and gals. Let's let's be real here. We're offering you semi quality entertainment every week for free. Text a friend. Text one friend a link to your favorite episode or this episode. Yeah, just do it. You can also email us boys at boyspodcast dot com. Send us some feedback. Put your physical address in the bottom of the email. We'll send you out some free stickers. It's going to be a good time. We'll read them on the air. We'll do all kinds of things. Send us some good feedback, comments, questions, concerns, criticisms. Love, Send them our yeah. way. Love, hate, maybe a good joke. Tell us a good joke. Yeah. Or a topic. How about a topic? Topic would be great. Topic would be great. Yeah. Thanks to our sponsors, Anthem Brewing, the crack of the Anthem beer. Had to wait. I'm sitting here staring at this delicious. Wait, is that Anthem or Anthem Part 2 beer? <laughs> Get it? I uh, like it. So many blank puns. Well, what's funny is we've been sneaking in. Yeah, if you if you've been listening to every episode, if you if you go go back, you know what? Go back and listen to them. Go back to the archives and see if you can find. It'll be a little drinking game. Have an anthem beer with you. Anytime you hear a blink reference in the last what five episodes? Yeah, take, four or five. Take a sip of that crisp anthem. Right now, I'm having a golden one. Delicious beer, great for the summertime. Anthembrewing.com. Fat Bison, maker of Great wooden signs and furniture for you and yours. He has a cool ass. Uh, it's a he can make it in a coffee table, a dinner table size. 
It's the city map, street map of Oklahoma City. It's a beautiful piece of furniture. It's the coolest thing I've ever seen. I wrote a little song about Fat Bison. Do you want to hear it? Please. It goes, stop me if you've heard this tune. Furniture in the dead of night. Spread those old butt lips and learn to fly all your life. Go to fatbison.com and make a buy. What do you think? I like it. Thank you. I'm working on That's it. That's so great. I'm working on it. Uh, Champion Vintage. Uh, when this episode airs, if you're listening to this on Friday, the day we drop it, Champion Vintage is going to have a booth at uh, Room 3 Vintage in Nichols Hills. Uh, check it out from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Now, where is that at exactly? It is on Britain and May Avenue. You know where that Johnny's Hamburgers is? The delicious Johnny's Hamburger. Yep. I think I'm going to go have my cheat meal. How badly do you miss a Johnny's Burger, man? I... It's only been like a week. <laughs> Listen, it's been two weeks. Um, it's been one week fiending. since you... What? What? I'm fiending <laughs> for some Johnny meat. Dude, that um, Johnny sauce. Bro. So good. So it's right by Johnny's. Right by Johnny's. What time does it start? 8 a.m. 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. They'll be there with uh, with some of their stuff. So go check it out. A lot of other vendors. Tons of other vendors. Is it free to enter? Free to enter. Oh man, you're you're making me an offer. There's gonna I be can't like food refuse. trucks and shit there too. It's gonna be it's gonna be an adventure. So go check that out. Saturday, the day after this drops, the twenty eighth, right? I don't know. Twenty seventh. It's this. It's tomorrow. It's, if you're listening to it on Friday. Yeah. <laughs> Lastly. Check it out. Thank you for the donations, the feedback, the shares, the support. We wouldn't do it without you. We really appreciate you. I I appreciate everyone in e- the, on the planet. Everyone. Not everyone. The lovers. The okay. dreamers and me. Okay. I do. You know what else we got? What? We got something brand new, Robbie. Ooh, this this episode we're we are sixty seventeen minutes in. And we're just dropping fucking Heat. Dare I say it's chock full of new news. Why don't you go ahead and tell the people? We got a hotline. We got that hotline bling. Fine. Hotline blink. Blink. You know what I really like? I like when people reference things that are super old, but they're trying to be hip. We'll talk about it in a minute. All right. I got one in my mind. All right. The new hotline number is area code 405. 582-0242. Five eight two zero two four two. Didn't let us pick our number. Yeah, unfortunately, I wanted to get like you know, three eleven boys. Oh, that would be or so something sick. like that. Yeah. But but when we set up this hotline, it wouldn't let us pick our number. I could pick from a list of numbers. So I thought four zero five five eight two zero two four two really rolls off the tongue. We can and here possibly we can write a uh, a jingle for it. Listeners, we have a lot of musician listeners. If you want to write a jingle in the vein of like Tall Paul Insurance, I love call five two four one five four one. If you want to write us a hotline jingle, we'll play it on the show. That'd be great. Yeah. So here, here's how this works. So you call four zero five five eight two zero two four two. It's going to send you right to a voicemail. Mm-hmm. You're going to hear me say, "Thanks for calling the boys' hotline. Leave a message, and we might play it on the show." Beep. You leave your message. Mm -hmm. It sends me an MP3 of that message to my inbox. Mm -hmm. I take that MP3. I download it to my hard drive. Then I minimize my browser window. I open a finder window or if I'm on a PC, a Windows Explorer window. I drag that to Dropbox. After that, I pull out my iPad. I open the, well, I put in my code. Well, before that, I open the case. And then Mr. Big drives back to Chicago. <laughs> right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Long story short, we might play it on the show yeah. if, it's, if it's good. Yeah. And I think it will be. So bring that fire, guys. I believe in you. I, I believe in a thing called love. I believe that love is the answer. Yeah. I'm trying to think of a blink reference for believe, and I can't. I know. Hmm. I mean, there's aliens exist, but he doesn't say believe in you. No, he doesn't. Yeah. I didn't mean to deceive you. Believe, Believe me. me. There you go. It was a stretch. It's a stretch, but we, we got there. We got it in there. And now without further ado, on to the show. Okay, we're here. We're back. We're back. Oh, that was a wonderful break for the intro music. You know, it's so funny. Speaking of that intro music, mm-hmm. I recorded that. The day before we did our first episode, 
No, yeah. I didn't. That wasn't our original theme song. No. Was it? Was it? No. I can't even remember. The, ah. No. Well, anyways, I recorded it so quickly, so shittily. It was kind of like a placeholder. Like, yeah. I'm going to go back and re-record that. Yeah. It's run like it, a... Run it through some nice stuff. A scratch track. Like, this is the idea I have for it. But I'm not going to lie. I just let it exist. I love it. It brings it brings a smile to my face and a tear to my eye every time I hear it. Well, a smile on your face lets me know that you love me. Um, I think that it's perfect as is because it's it tells you what the show is. There's no bells and fucking whistles here. It's just us, man. We're just, it's us directly through a soundboard, and that's it. That's it. And we're here with another... I, man, I kind of feel like I shot my wad in the intro. All that excitement, yeah. all those new things. Are you drained? I'm drained. I'm in my refractory period mm. of funny. So uh, I want to start things off with... Uh, I had a thought today. So you you mentioned... Uh, that hoe over there? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I, I started my day with a thought. <laughs> What's your thought? Don't tell Kate. Uh, <laughs> you mentioned to me that there was uh, a trailer... A certain, is oh, yes. it, now am I going to bu- butcher this? Is it called a red band? Red oh, band trailer? Red band trailer, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Of the new Jay and Silent Bob movie. Mm-hmm. The Jay and Silent Bob reboot is what I believe it's called. That's the name of the movie, yes. Yes. You said, watch it, think about it, let's talk about it on the show. So I watched it. You thought about it. I thought about it, and guess what comes next? We're going to talk about it. We are. So I have some thoughts about it. Number, Hit me. Number one, uh-huh. I think I will enjoy the movie. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a Kevin Smith film. You can't go into a Kevin Smith film expecting to be wowed with artistry. You right. Know? It's not going to be deep. It's going to be very surface level. And I, there's something about that that I like. It's a, it's a, um, it, it's almost like. A, a, a travel back to a, a different time yeah. you know back when movies were free to say things like you know caca poo poo pee pee hard dick jo- you know just jokes jokes about dirty gross things yeah so it'd be a nice throwback to that not afraid to be crude um i will say i have a couple of other takeaways though okay like i i loved i loved all the cameos that were in it like, a lot of them every few seconds i was like oh Cool. Yeah. Oh, and I'm not going to ruin it. Not going to spoil it. And not those gonna, are just ones in the trailer. I'm not going to spoil the trailer. That's my new character I'm working on. Guy that, that spoils the trailer. <laughs> hey. Hey. Seen that new uh, Kevin Smith? That yeah, comes out this summer. Oh, spoiler alert. Comes out this summer. Hey. Hey, you see that new Star Wars trailer? Yeah. I, I, you know that uh, Darth Vader makes a comeback. I'm, I'm not saying spoilers. <laughs> Spoiler alert! No, it it looks it looks entertaining. I will say, I kind of miss Fat Kevin Smith. Me too, man. He looks when people are known for being large for a long time, mm-hmm. and then they lose a lot of weight. Which which don't get me wrong, I'm not weight loss shaming Kevin Smith. Right. Good on him. He had a heart attack. Yeah, he, he almost died. died. Yeah, yeah. He, very very close to dying. He uh he lost a shitload of weight. Mm-hmm. He's back mm-hmm. and smaller than ever. But here's the deal: the same thing happened to Al Sharpton. Mm-hmm. You start looking like ET after a while. Same scenario, exactly. Right? Like here, because yeah, cause, bugly eyes. Yeah, scrawny, weird neck. Because that neck fat, that neck skin ain't going anywhere. Uh-uh. So that's hanging out there. I think it makes you look older. And I'm not an ageist. I'm 37. I'm old as fuck. Um. When you're seen in a certain way for so long, it's like we talked about on the previous show when I was talking about when I used to be fat and I got skinny, people were like, you burger, blah, blah, You're seen a certain way for so long that that drastic of a change, it's, it's jarring. And in this case, Silent Bob's character is a fat man. Yes, it's a fat man in a backwards hat, his trench coat. All the dialogue toward him is about him being fat. Right. I mean... Fly, fat ass, fly! Right? Exactly. The whole thing. And then speaking of, Jason Mewes, who? Jay. You know, Jay's went through some... The titular Jay. Yeah. He, uh, Jason's been through some trouble in his life. He had yeah, some issues with drugs. Uh, I don't know all the details. I'm not a, I'm not a Jason Mewes Oh, you're not a celebrity boy. gossip? Okay. No. But there's something about him 
that's a little off-putting in this new trailer, mm -hmm. and I think you know what it is. It's just it's the area just below the nose and right above the chin. Yeah, it's it's two rows mm -hmm. below the nose. Uh -huh. It's that grin above the chin. Uh -huh. It's teeth. It's teeth. He's got fake teeth. Clearly fake teeth. Because he had, you know, he had what some may describe as meth mouth mm -hmm. for a long time. Yeah, but now it looks worse, I think. It's like you put brand new tires on a 1982 Fiero. That's just beat to shit. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that looks like it's been through the ringer. His mouth looks weird. Mm -hmm. And again, more power to the guy for getting off the drugs. Good for him. Being in another movie. Mm -hmm. I, lo I love Jay. Out of Jay and Silent Bob, who's your favorite? Uh, Jay. He's the funniest one. What's funny is the dude wasn't even an actor. No. He's just a buddy of his that he basically was like, hey, do you want to be in a movie basically playing yourself? There you go. Check out the trailer. It's on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Jay and Silent Bob reboot. Let us know what you think. You can call that hotline. You can send us an email. Hell, you can text me personally if you know me. I want to know what you think. I, I will enjoy the movie. I will probably go see the movie. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a nice little, uh, you prescribe up, you head on down to the old theater and you watch it. Well, when I watched that trailer, it made me think of the Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back film, which I do believe you, me, Colin Butler went to go see, previous boys guest, mm -hmm. in the theater opening night because we were stoked about it and i believe we were a little stoned oh we were well, stoned we were very stoned yes and just giggling up a storm it was a funny movie cheesy but that's what it's supposed to be a right. cheesy film i'm not going there expecting fucking spartacus or right. you know just give me a cheesy movie um it did get me to thinking though mm -hmm. and i'd like to hear your thoughts on this but you know we're we're a nostalgic bunch here at boys i mean mm -hmm. For God's sake, we're doing a Blink-182 tribute show yeah, how much Saturday, <laughs> September 28th at the Speakeasy at 9 p.m. It's $5, followed by a Ryan Drake Speakeasy 90s 2000s dance party. So I like nostalgia. Oh, I bathe, I, I bathe in nostalgia, man. I bathe in nostalgia. I like that. Got me to thinking, though. I'm just wondering, like, sometimes are we just out of ideas? What, what, what is with the constant reboots of everything? How many fucking Spider-Man movies have there been? Enough with the reboots! Every fucking day. It's a new one. It's a, it's a new one every day. Oh, they're going to reboot a reboot. They're rebooting uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Again. Wait. They, again. As in like Freddy K and the Freddy boys? Freddy K and the boys. Really? Freddy K and them dream warriors. Are, is Robert England going to be Freddy Krueger? He's not attached to it. So they did it with uh, uh, Jackie Earl Healy, which I thought was a decent movie. A lot uh -huh. of people talked a lot of shit on. I'm a huge Nightmare on Elm Street fan. So they said they're doing a reboot. I'm like, just let, no pun intended for this film, let sleeping dogs lie. L let it go. You know? Mm -hmm. Why with, why with the reboots? Why with the remix? Why with, not even remix, why extend a franchise that doesn't need to be extended? Like right. all the new Star Wars movies that are just shitty. You're just yeah. Star Wars is a tough one because I know a lot of people who are really, really into Star Wars and let it be known. Mm -hmm. I'm not the biggest movie guy. I'm definitely not the biggest Star Wars guy. Yeah, I've seen most of them, you know. Yeah, I couldn't tell you what happens in the first trilogy or whatever, but I've seen most of them. I've seen a couple in the theater. If someone told you Darth Vader, you could probably draw Darth Vader, right? I could draw. You could draw the main characters yeah. if needed. I would probably draw Darth Helmet, though. Yes. An exaggerated helmet. That's a wonderful character. What's funny is when I was a kid, I saw Spaceballs before I saw Star Wars. So I didn't get any of the jokes. I thought it was a funny movie because, you know, I'm like six. Yeah. Whatever. I thought it was so funny in Spaceballs when they're like, they're combing the desert looking for blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, man, we ain't found oh, shit. shit. If they, I, if they pick. Yeah. I loved that so much when I was a kid. I thought that was, I don't know why. One of the best jokes in the movie. It's just a line. Yeah. So funny. Yeah. So, so funny. But yeah, there's, there's so many, so many remakes. Uh, I think they've just run out of steam. People don't have any creative, uh, creativity or maybe we're in such a 
heated, stressful, walk on eggshells kind of a time that it's like, Ugh. I mean, there's there, there's a lot of movies coming out that are original, but no one knows about them because they don't hit the theaters. They're all indie and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, my thing is, you brought up on the way home, you said, did you see about the new Thor yeah. uh, reboot? Mm-hmm. Which is, I guess it is a reboot. It's not a sequel. Well, no, it's a sequel. From what I've read, it's a sequel where th- th- Thor's, the mantle of Thor is being handed over to, uh, what's her name? Shit. Natalie Portman. Natalie Portman, who walked away from the Marvel Universe. She, it was, it's widely known that she didn't like working on it. She was over it. Left. Really? Yeah. And now they're going to make Jane Foster her character, Thor, which happens in the newer comics that they wrote. Which didn't really sell very well because mm-hmm. people want to see. I mean, Thor, Thor's Chris Hemsworth, man. Thor's a a Norse god. Well, I don't want to be that guy that's like, yeah. Thor's a guy. No, no, no. But I mean, that's here's uh, my thing. Yeah, if if you're rebooting things and making like like again, I didn't give a fuck about Captain Marvel being a woman. Yeah, I could care less. I'm not gonna watch the movie. I'm Whatever. Like, I didn't know that she wasn't. Right. I, I thought, I mean, sure. there's, there's Marvel, but I mean, Captain Marvel, from what I've seen in comics, has always been that kind of like a, a woman, right? Well, here's my know. thing, man. And, and this is probably going to sound bad, but I'm just going to say it. we're all about honesty here on Boys. Sure. But when you when you reboot a movie and you cast a character, an iconic character as a woman or whatever else. Sure. I'm just like, man, there are so many badass characters that are women. Oh, yeah. Why don't you give that the light of day? And I feel like it's table scraps, basically. It is. And well, I like, feel like that's a pro, like, feminine thing to say that. Like, 100%. Same with, same with, Spawn. like, if, if a new Spawn movie came out. Yeah. And they made, you know, Spawn. I can't remember his name. Al. Damn it. I can't remember his name. Al oh, Simmons. Shit. Yeah. Russell Simmons. Russell Simmons. Yeah. He came out with a flat build hat. Yeah. No, if, if they, you know, cast Shia LaBeouf as Spawn, I'd be like, that's fucking whack, man. Spawn's a black dude. Everybody yeah. knows it. Why yeah. are you trying to be like woke or whatever yeah. you want to call it? I don't Re- know. But be reverse woke because be a white guy in it. Yeah. My thing is so like it's with, with the Thor thing when I saw that, I was like, well, I guess they did make a comic for it. But you have Valkyrie such a badass character. Like she is a super badass, yeah. like on the same level as Thor. But give her a movie make her character a thing instead of like nah let's just make this a girl no no no. there's there's so many especially with um fox being acquired by disney so now the x-men can now come to the marvel cinematic universe the mcu as they call it right i cannot my mind can't think a number high enough of how many badass female characters there are in that universe that you don't have to make wolverine a woman you don't have to make gambit a woman it's Listen, just like there's so many badass women you and me both and everybody else out there mm-hmm. we're waiting with bated breath for the first jubilee movie dude i kid but there are a lot of awesome characters like sure let me ask you something mm-hmm. if you you know josh hollywood sitting across the table from me mm-hmm. got my stogie you got your mouth. stogie yeah. you're, you're lighting it with the hundred dollar bill that's yeah, on yeah, fire yeah, 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 yeah. if you could pick the next comic book movie one that hasn't been made yet. Uh huh. What would it be? I mean, there's a there's a big part of me that kind of would want a standalone. Um, they've they've introduced the character already, and they did her kind of okay. But if you introduce like an origin Mystique movie, just because she has ties to so many different characters, right? That would be awesome. Yeah, because you know she fathered, she fathered, she mothered Nightcrawler and Rogue. So you can like, and that could be the splinter for those other things. Like, right. That would be cool. Yeah. I mean, they're doing Fantastic Four again. I don't understand why. Right. Why? Why? Well, okay. What was the comic book that had, um, was it Wildcats? Where the dude had like a mat. That like, was Grifter it, from Wildcats. Grifter. Yeah. That dude was a badass. Yeah. I love Make Grifter. that movie. Yeah. I have a Wildcats number one signed by Jim Lee. Dude, I thought Grifter was so awesome. Maybe. Okay. What was it? Uh, dudes and and ladies out there as well you might have been into this kind of stuff too for me personally i really loved characters that were semi-masked uh but the hair had to stick out of the top right and a fucking duster gambit gambit fucking gambit man how cool was gambit it's so tight my favorite character in Watchmen is fucking rorschach because he's got a goddamn duster on Mm -hmm. you gotta wear that duster face Face is covered. covered yep if i had to pick a movie 
I would probably say The Max. Oh, yeah. From the 90s cartoon on, what was that on MTV, right? It was on Liquid Television. I yeah, think. I, he, there's been in talks of making that. That would be so sweet. I loved, I have several of those comic books from back in the day. I think I have like maybe one through five or something mm-hmm. like that. And I loved the TV show. It was dark and weird and creepy. So, and I love the art style. Explain I thought it was me so the good. character of Max. It's a vampire, right? No, he's not really a vampire. I don't. Honestly, it's been so long since I watched it. I don't really remember. I just know that he's big and purple and he has bright yellow hands that have spikes on them. And then there's a blonde girl that's like his friend slash love interest, I guess. Okay. And she was always drawn like in a really cool way. Like, I don't know, just a little out of the ordinary. And then it would it would shoot to like an alternate reality where he was like running through the jungle and she was like an Amazon queen. I don't, I'm okay. going gonna, gonna to go back and revisit some Max, but I've always loved the way that character looks. And I just, I don't, while I don't remember the origin or the story so much, I do remember really, it really being appealing as far as the art style and just the mood of it. I looked it up. I know you're talking about what I was thinking was Jared Leto is going to play Morbius, who I guess is like a, a giant muscular vampire and in, in like the Spider-Man universe. Okay. Weird. Yeah. There's a few I'd like to see. I think a Wildcats movie would be sweet. Wildcats would be sick. The thing is, though, is that comic wasn't as big as the X-Men. No, it doesn't they have tried. That they appeal. tried really hard. Yeah. I mean, the X-Men animated series really pushed comics, like comic book things off the page and onto the television. Yeah. Like Batman the animated series, the Spider-Man animated series, like all. And then that came movies and that just blew the fuck up. Another one I'd like to see is a Gen 13 movie. Ooh. I... I have many, 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 and I'm not bragging here, mm-hmm. just going through my collection, many, many Gen 13 comics, like maybe a hundred with all the variant Damn, covers dude. and everything. Yeah. I, a lot. That was my favorite comic growing up. Really? Loved all the characters. Had a huge crush on Fairchild, the super strength, like seven foot tall redhead. Oh, yeah. Still got a poster of her rolled up in the old closet in there. See, my thing is like, I was... I wasn't in, I was super into X-Men and anything in the X-Men universe. So I would read a lot of that stuff. I really didn't go too much into anything else. So I don't really know a whole lot of other things. I mean, I know there's always characters that kind of jump in and out. That was the cool thing with Marvel is they let their characters kind of play together. It's like a giant toy box yeah. of all the characters going, well, why don't we have Wolverine fight the Hulk? Why the fuck not? <laughs> totally. You know what I mean? Like, okay, cool. I remember when I was a kid. I, again, I love Gen 13. There was this certain cover of Gen 13. I think it was number like two or three. And all of the characters are like, like mashed up together on the cover. Like Fairchild's laying down like in the corner of the cover of the comic mm-hmm. book. And like the other ones are all like, they're laying on top of each other. Yeah. And I remember laying in my twin size bed in my room and I had that comic book. I was laying on my stomach and just... Uh, no, no <laughs> not quite. Not not quite yet. No, 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 no. Not quite yet. I had that comic book to my left. I'm laying on my stomach, pillow under my chest. Uh-huh. I have a clipboard in front of me. And you know, I love to draw. You love your clipboard too. I do. I do love a good clipboard. I was drawing the cover, mm-hmm. but I drew her naked. Oh, so and sexy. I was like hiding. So I had another piece of paper like flipped up. So in sexy. Ca- in yeah. case dad came in mm-hmm. or, or stepmom came in and I'd flap it down real quick. And I remember like drawing her form based on what she looked like in the leotard or you know right. the suit or whatever because they're all skin tight. And then I remember I started drawing the nips. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And I got a little boner. And I was like pressing my boner into the mattress. Mm-hmm. You know, as you do as a sure, child. you hump the mattress. And uh, I remember doing that many times. Man, that- I used to draw. I used to draw a lot of naked women. I loved it. And when I was a kid, I don't know if it was the Christian guilt or mm-hmm. whatever, but I was so ashamed of it. Like I would draw Psylocke from the X-Men, but I would draw her nude. And it was just, you know, yeah, I would. And then maybe sometimes I would. Sure. Be, beat, beat off to it. Be, after. Beat you beat. I didn't have cable. Psylocke's a character that I didn't get enough love, man. They introduced her in that one X-Men movie and that character's a badass. And they they should have really stretched her out a little bit more. But speaking of drawing nudes, I was... <laughs> flipping through instagram you know as you do when you're bored and just something popped up in my feed i don't know what friend posted it or maybe maybe it was an ad but it was a it may have been one of those like ones you follow that are like uh like hood clips or whatever it's like this giant sure thing but it was a tastefully drawn nude of just like a female form it was like 
with pen- pencil drawn mm-hmm. with breasts and like a, a stomach, like just this, the bust, chest, abdomen area. Mm-hmm. And I looked at it and I stopped and I'm in public and I go, I look around, I'm like, so anyone could look over my shoulder and see these boobs and I'm, oh, a, cre- totally. and I'm a creep. But my thought was this. There's something, I don't find anything uh, blatantly erotic, not e- maybe erotic's not the word, gross, you know what I mean, about mm-hmm. a drawn nude thing, like that. Like if it's like an art class style drawing, it's it's kind of, there's something, I mean, artful, tasteful about of it. Of course. It's not like it's drawn, I mean, you see those too, where it's drawn like legs spread and like a demon, like a fucking xenomorph popping out of her puss. Like that's, that's kind of gross. There's a difference between pornography and mm-hmm. art. When I was a kid, I definitely drew pornography. Sure. But as an adult, it's like drawing that stuff's kind of fun. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I don't want to be ashamed of that. Whatever. But I was a little perv when I was a kid. And did you ever beat off to a comic book? Yeah. Or a drawing or a cartoon? Yeah, I can tell you which one it was. Which one? It was... Uh, Give me all the It was the details. Phoenix Saga comic. And it's... Uh, oh, man. It's, so it's Jean Grey on the cover, but she's like in the red suit and her arms are spread like, you know, the Phoenix. And it's just, she's just got, sorry, man, I was like 12. Right. These boobs were huge, huge. It's back when like the 90s when they were drawing like. Anatomically just, just, incorrect. Yeah. Just yeah. tits. It's right. Just, everything was just tits and ass. Like a, like a Rob Liefeld, like. Yeah. Can't draw hands, yeah. but boy, can he draw a set of cheeks. S- super small shoulders, no hands, no feet, just tits. And it's like, uh, and yeah, I gave it a little. A little crank, a little crank. But here's the thing: you're, that's, just, ch- you're just checking all the boxes. You're, you're reading. Mm-hmm. You're, you know, it's a, it's creative writing, it's storytelling, it's and drawing. It, yes, it is, and it's jacking off, and it's jacking off. It's all the things. But that's before you knew of like, and then when I found out what like, like heavy metal and like you know there was like graphic comic books like that, then you're like, wh- what? I remember there was this trashy kid. Well, let's call him. Travis, because that's a trashy name. Yeah, Travis. Speak- Travis the Trasher. Travis the Trasher had a copy of Heavy Metal, like the the comic Heavy Metal, mm-hmm. and uh, we we're on a school bus, and he was flipping through it, and I saw it was a comic. I was like, "Hey, man, what's that?" He's like, "It's a comic," and I look at it, and it's just like, because the cover's like a like a Frazetti, is that how do you say Frazetta? Frazetta, yeah. And it's just you know this scantily clad, like be like beautiful, like strong, like barbaric woman on the cover i'm like yeah well, that's cool and so i kind of nudge over and look and you know he's on a page which is like just tits yeah it's like a bear tit. Dude, heavy metal magazine is fucking awesome yeah i will i have a few in my comic book box i have probably like i don't know five or ten of them yeah and man i like erotic art okay it's cool i like it yeah like if you free plug if you follow virginia rose seven on instagram okay it's she she's a lady probably about our age and all she does is post erotic art and some of it is so fucking tight what you dude it's all tight i think it's like so like if you we, we went to half price books the other day to go it's half half off day hey yep. everybody free plug for half price books oh yeah sign up for that email check it you get some deals so you know you can go there and you can go through the uh sci-fi section and pick up a an edgar rice burroughs like conan book right you get the cover of that and then you can go over to the art section and find a Frazetta book. A book of his art. Or uh, what's the the one that started with the P? Fuck, what's his name? They're like two distinct artists of that kind of mm-hmm. art. Put them together. It's the same art. I think he actually did the, all the art for the Conan uh, books. I believe so. So it's tastefully done. The art is really good. Yeah. But it just happens to be shapely, beautiful women. Yeah. And that's what I liked of it. And that, that may really uh, what maybe set my taste for... For what I like in, in ladies was just, you know, sh- shapely women. Totally, man. Yeah. I never really understood the whole skinny, gross, like, no, I'm not skinny shaming. Just like, you know, that whole, like, uh, waif-like. Waif. What was that popular model everyone talked about? Kate Moss. Kate Moss. Not for me, man. Not for you. No. I feel you. No J Muse now. I mm. can see the beauty in every woman. For sure. Let me tell you. Every woman. I could look at any woman and be like, Something's beautiful about her, or maybe a lot of things. Dude, w- Same I'm, with men. Like I, I can, I'm, I'm comfortable enough in my manhood to yeah. be like, that's a good looking dude, dude, for sure. I, yeah, I feel like I can see beauty in like everything, uh, and I'll point it out from time to time, especially like Chris, Chris Van Dyne and I, 
we bartend together. Mm-hmm. And if there's like a super good looking dude, like, you know, when you see one, just like Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. That's it. I'd be, hey, check that guy out. Yeah. Like, that dude. Good God. What's something about him? I don't know what it is. Something about that dude. Some, you know? some men, you know, just have this like air to them. Yeah. Where it's like, yeah, I'm not gay, but damn, he's dashing. Yeah, it's a dashing. Yeah. I mean? yeah. That's a gentleman right there. That's a dashing guy. There. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Same thing. Yeah. I mean, like, and that, that's why I think we need to stop. Uh, we got to stop hating each other, man. We we all, we're just humans on this rock, man. We're on the, we're, not to get all Joe Rogan, we're on, we're on this spaceship called Earth, man. We're just we're flying a million miles an hour. Jamie, pull that up. It's weird. You ever seen a <laughs> antelope eat a dashing young man? Crazy man. Jamie, pull that up. That's good. We're getting better. We're, we're slowly. We're, we're getting there. Mine's more like the better. super stoned one. But yeah, man. Like we're all just people. Let's just. And I get there's there's always going to be hate in the world, but there's also a lot of love, man. A lot of love, and you got to make your love. You know, tend your garden, clean your room, deal with your neck of the woods. And if everyone did that, man, this world would be beautiful. I, I actually went on a walk with our uh, coworker the other day. We had that kind of conversation. Of, Boys alum Tommy McKenzie. Tommy McKenzie. If we just we had the conversation of you know if we just like if everyone just we're all cool. I'm cool. He's cool. You're cool. And if everyone was just cool with each other and cool with their surroundings, and but everybody did that as a whole, it would make one bubble of cool. Well, we talked about it many times before. It's like if I spend most of my time on Twitter and Instagram, Facebook, or on like Reddit or you know anything on a screen, I'm just like, man, the world is shit. Yeah, everything sucks. Everything's crazy and weird and stupid. You know, there's things I agree with, things I don't agree with, but everything just seems so cluster fucked up. Yeah. You know, but then if you get out and like you said, take a walk, spend some time with people you like, do it, do, do a hobby, do a hobby, (laughs) draw, draw Gen 13 and jack off to it for all I care. Right. Or do this, go to somewhere you've never been before, but have always felt you wanted to go, but you felt uncomfortable. Just go do it. Do it. Meet new people. I went to a diner down the street from our house I've never been to. I was like, it's probably just going to be some uptight old Christians who run a cafe. Not Christian shaming. I was one myself. Go in this cafe, sit down. Couldn't be the nicest people in the world. It's all old people in there, but I thought that was super cool. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm the young, I'm the kid. Yeah. They kept calling me son. Can I get you some more coffee, son? Did it make you feel kind of good? I felt good. Yeah. It felt great. Yeah. You get out of your bubble. You, you experience new things. And the more people do that and see that, for me, for the most part, everything's we are very blessed to be living in the country that we live in. I say it all the time. Yeah. What A, I say, what a time to be alive. Yeah. B, I say, I'm proud to be an American, yeah. where at least I know I'm free. We may have different beliefs, sure. but I respect differences. I welcome... Yeah. The only know, way you can grow. I welcome civil debate, civil discourse. Sure. I'm not the kind of person that would not be friends with somebody based on their political views, their religious views, yeah. their sexuality, you know. Yeah, I joke around the show all the time that like the woke really get on my fucking nerves, which yeah. they do, but it's only when it's not genuine. If somebody truly believes in a cause, I find that profoundly yeah. incredible. But when it's just virtue signaling and like, well, I'm I'm here, I'm doing this for the cause, but I got my phone out and I'm doing this. You know, like that's when it starts to rub me yeah. the wrong way. Like you show and up, I've take a picture guilt- and leave. And I've been guilty of it too. Sure. We all have, you know. I think you just got to find, and I, I really don't like this word because it, it's pretty much, you got to find your truth. Yeah. You know, and find out what you really, in your heart of hearts, what you really believe and not just something that's on the surface level. Like, what do you really believe? Or not what a friend believes or, your, sure. you know, your crew. And, uh, and that, and that, here's the thing that fluctuates, that changes. I'm learning this as a 37 year old man that dude, you change all the time. Oh yeah. Nothing is permanent. No. And you should, if you're not, if you're not changing and growing is you're doing life wrong. I agree. You have to, and, but not change. Like, you know, one day I'm a super nice citizen. The next I'm a Nazi. No growth, pos- positive growth. If you're not, if you're not watering your plants, your internal plants. Your garden's going to die, bro. Well, I did a little watering last week, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm a man of many hobbies. I like a lot of different things. Yeah, you like drawing Gen 13 characters nude. Yep. You like, you know. Jacking off to that jacking drawing when off I'm done with it. No, I, uh, I told myself, I said, you know what? 
it's been way too long since I got back into drawing. Oh. I used to draw. Dude. When was the last, before this, when was the last time you picked up a pen or pencil and drew something? I mean, if it wasn't work related. Sure. A long time. I draw things for work sometimes. Something for fun. Something for right. you. Just for pure pleasure. Mm -hmm. Years. Wow. Years, dude. And I mean, you grew up with me. You know, I have drawn my whole oh, life. Yeah. Like I was drawing before I knew how to write. I loved to draw. I've always been into that stuff. Yeah. So I told myself, I was like, all right, you're going to set aside one night a week to just dust off the old sketch pad. And how long do you give yourself? I mean, as long as it takes. Sure. You know, like if I, if I do it for 15 minutes and I feel good about that, then that's that. Yeah. If I want to sit down and do it for a couple hours, then I'll do that. Now, I haven't started yet, but yeah. the plan is an action. You have it in action. It's set. Yes, that's the plan an, is set, not an action. Set. The, well, the first step to, to finishing your task is making a plan for that's that right. task. I've had that happen to me several times. I mean, uh, I sent you uh, a little video of my progress the other day. I haven't sat down and picked up a guitar and wrote and recorded anything. Jesus. It's been a very, very long time. Yeah. And it felt bad. But you and I, since we were doing this Blink-182 thing, you know, you're when you watch something on YouTube, it brings up, you know, uh, similar type things. And uh, I think you texted me, hey, man, I forgot how good Newfound Glory was. Yeah. Because that shit kind of pops. It, there's in similar camps. So it made me go down a Newfound Glory rabbit hole and put this, you know, it's, it's in my head and I can't get that kind of style out of my head. So I'm like, I want to write something like that. So I sat, I, I made a, made an effort. Diana's at work. Dogs are fed. Everything's done that needs to be done in the house. Yards mode. Laundry's Yards mode. done. I'm going to pick up a guitar. I'm going to plug it in. I'm just going to make something up. And I did a little make em up. I didn't get to finish it, mm -hmm. but I got, I got the ball rolling. Well, dude, I think that's kind of the point of what we're talking about here is no matter what it is, if it's healthy and constructive, like take a little me time. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I, I've talked about it many times on the show, but my life has completely changed in the last couple years and especially in the last like six months or so i'm yeah. like i'm playing this full-time dad role these days you know and mm -hmm. that does limit your me time but you can still carve a little out sure. if i can do it you can do it and yeah. i'm speaking generally here but uh you know i love hobbies i like video games i like comic books i like you know tv i like all kinds of stuff yeah i like tinkering with guitars i like playing that's kind of the fun thing about this blink 405 thing man is i haven't played with people in probably four or five years. That's crazy. And the first time that the, the three of us got together, I mean, it was fun just me and you going through the songs sure. and kind of nostalging out on some of these songs and the harmonies and stuff, mm -hmm. which is, which we're nailing by the way. But the first time we got together, all three of us and, and, and really jammed it, man, it just felt so good Yeah. because I've always said my two least favorite parts of being in a band, booking shows and writing songs. Mm -hmm. I love to record. I love playing shows. I love I love jamming, mm -hmm. but that writing music is what's tough. Writing, yeah, writing sucks. Coming up with the name sucks. Coming up with names for your song sucks. We don't have to do any of that. None of that. It's already it's there. The like, show the show booked itself. Mm -hmm. All we have to do is practice. Yeah, and we're I get it tight. Not to pat myself on the back or pat you on the back or pat Chris on the back, but I feel like we're doing a pretty good job. Well, I think we we did good by picking an album. I mean, it's the anniversary. It's why we wanted to do it. Also. That album, not to get back into the whole Blink talk, but I don't want to say the album changed my life as a whole, but it definitely changed the direction of my life when it came out. You like, want to hear, hear something cool real what's quick? That? So, you know, you and I went to Choctaw High School. Mm -hmm. um, there was a CD store, record store in Norman at the time called CD World. Oh, okay. CD, I thought you were going to say Music Dimensions. Nope. Nope. CD World. Uh -huh. And, uh, the guy that ran the store was named Kevin. He mm -hmm. was this real, he was almost like if Chris Farley had a ponytail and wore a leather jacket, that's what he looked so like. So like Mr. Big from <laughs> Yes, from like big, boisterous guy, yeah. larger than life guy. I wonder whatever happened to him. But he, uh, I went down to CD World the week before Enema of the State came out. Mm -hmm. And he like looked around. He was like, tell you what, man, I'll sell you a copy of that early. So I had Enema of the State a week before it released. And this is pre-Napster, oh, yeah. you know, Soul Seek, You had an torrent actual physical copy. Of the CD. And I brought it, and he, he said, don't burn that, though. He was like, don't distribute it. 
I was like, dude, I won't. So I slipped him. I think I slipped him a 20 for it. Mm-hmm. You know, that was back when CDs were 17, 18 bucks. Right. So I just slipped him a 20. It's like, sweet. I felt like I was buying drugs. Y- you know, you were. Yeah. And I took it to school the next day. And boy, was I not the coolest kid in class. Or so I thought. No, that it, that's pretty fucking cool. Because it makes you seem like you have an in in the industry. You know? Totally. Like, I got it a week before it came out. I mean, I did. He was just a Chris Farley lookalike in a leather See, jacket. If that would have been me, my cringe ass would have made up a lie that, oh yeah, uh, my <laughs> a total fucking uh, school bus folklore. Let's hear it. Yeah, uh, actually, my my cousin, uh, his girlfriend, uh, her brother, uh, is buddies with Mark Hoppus. His sister, they're friends, so I I got it. That it's just long, but they mailed it to me. I got it early. Totally. It's got to be a friend of a friend of a friend. You can't just be like, I know Mark Hoppus. No, no. But my my cousin's best friend used to date him. Yeah. <laughs> and she gets, anytime they make a t-shirt or like a new piece of merch, like she gets one in the mail mysteriously. That's the best. Yeah, that's the best one. Yeah. And but you, so she sent it to me. So how good of care did you take care of that CD? Oh, dude. Like it was a fucking just I still, a golden. I still have it and it's probably still jewel case and all in immaculate condition. Hell yeah. You know me. I keep. My how did you feel tight. when you opened that record up? Dude, I remember walking back to my car because I had to park. It was down on campus corner, so I had to park kind of far away because school was in session right then. Mm-hmm. I think I think I went down there during the day for some reason, like while school was in. I don't remember why. Maybe we were filming something for school or something. But I remember walking pretty far to my car and just like walking very fast back to my car because mm. I you couldn't. Bump that. I couldn't wait. And I you know, pulled the shrink wrap off and the little protective deal on top. You didn't leave that on for a little flip up? Well, I do flip up, <laughs> mm-hmm. but then I would like peel it and I put that sticker on my steering wheel oh. as a reminder of the day's event. And I blasted it because, you know, Norman to Choctaw is probably a good 30, 40 minute drive. So what song had you heard by then? Just What's My Age Again? Yeah, that was the only one. So when you hear Dumpweed yeah. for the first time in your car. Oh, dude. Smile from ear to ear. Just driving back in my little Dodge Nice blank reference. <laughs> my little Dodge Sundance or whatever mm-hmm. piece of shit car I was driving at the time. I believe it was dubbed the Fartmobile. I think I remember you getting that before everyone and that being like the buzz around like our crew. Right. Like, hey, Rob, Rob's got an empty state. Yeah. I'm gonna go to lunch with Rob today. So I could, yeah. just, just so I can listen Dude, to an album yeah, five that, days before it came out. I think that came out over the summer and I was in uh, San Antonio at the time. And dude, we, me and Bronson bought that CD. Well, he bought it and I copied it. Mm-hmm. But it was like, that CD came out. You know, you flip through the booklet, listen to all the songs. Like, these songs are, these are bangers. So I'm looking like you couldn't, the internet was infancy by then. Totally. But you can find like, they had a website. They had like pictures and like posters and stuff on it. So it's like, okay, I need some dicky shorts. I need, because the Watts Mage again, they were nude. Yeah. I need to see what they look like. I remember that so vividly. Mm-hmm. Looking at a CD booklet or maybe like posters on the big clack clack poster rack. Oh, like yeah. Like a Spencer Gifts or mm-hmm. a Gadzooks or something. And and like taking mental notes like, okay, what's Chino Moreno wearing in this? Mm-hmm. And how am I going to get that? How I go, I'm going to go to the thrift store and I'm going to find a, a polo shirt with three stripes across the chest. I'm going to find the closest one to that I can. Me too. Okay. What, what kind of shoes? <clears throat> okay. Mm-hmm. What, 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 how high are the socks? All right. Yeah. Yeah. What color are the socks? Yeah. Are those actual dicky pants or are they something else? That was a beautiful time, man. Oh, yeah. Because now it's like anything's a Google search away. Yeah. Anything is an Instagram follow away. Yeah. You know, but we did like, we did like research. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. book work. Clothing research. Yeah, man. I, I think I sent a, a text to you. I, I went and got a pair of dicky shorts. I haven't put on a pair. Of, I haven't worn shorts in God knows how long. I haven't worn a pair of dicky shorts in ages. But every summer when Target was still still selling them. Uh, me and my wife would go out, would walk around and I'd go to the men's section and I'd grab a pair of shorts and I'd try them on. Like, uh, I think I'm going to get them. This is the summer I'm going to get them. Mm-hmm. And I did. But when I put them on for this thing, like I got to get a pair and I had them on and man, this wave of nostalgia hit me of like, I wore these every day. Every day, dude. I, I lived in Dickies, flat front pants and Dickie shorts mm-hmm. for years. Yeah. Like four years probably. Yeah. You know, high school and right after. Dude. It's all D- I wore. Dickies. Someone posted on the, I, I follow this tooth and nail page and someone posted a picture of POD, like one of their promo pictures and they're all wearing like Dickies, but wearing other band t-shirts and like, man, 
anybody else try to like emulate bands from their promo pictures or posters? And I was like, yeah, man, Dickie sold a shit ton of work shirts, pants, and shorts in the 1990s. Oh, yeah. Like Dickie Scott's how hipsters saved PBR. I think pop punk kids and hardcore, like, you know, hardcore kids. Right. Saved Dickie's. Like, it's not just for dudes who work at gas stations anymore. No, no. I wanted that work shirt. I wanted the blue work shirt so bad or the black one or mm-hmm. the Dickie's jacket. Yeah. The, like, oh, the Dickie's jacket. The, like the mail carrier t- mm-hmm. type jacket, the the work worker jacket. Yeah, the Eisenhower with like the padding on the inside. Yeah. Those are cool. Oh, boy, did I want one of those. And I finally got one, mm-hmm. you know, and I was, oh, I just thought I was hot shit in that. But you get with that jacket specifically. You never look like the dudes in the bands do. Nah. You put it on like, why is it so boxy? Yeah, <laughs> why, why, I can't afford a tailor, okay? It's a little high and wide. You think these bands tailored their Dickies I don't jackets? know, maybe. Maybe they were sponsored by Dickies. That's true. Maybe Dickies made them for these bands. Because I'll tell you this much, mm-hmm. I never put on a pair of Dickies and felt like I looked like Chino. I thought I looked like a fucking penguin in them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Same with Dickie shorts. I never put them on and been like, now I look like Tom DeLonge. I'm like, nope. Now I look like I shit myself. Right. Because the butt always like bunches up. Yep. But yeah, I bought I bought a couple pair of Dickies in preparation for the for the show. Mm-hmm. And I felt the exact same thing. As soon as I slid a leg down into one of those tubes. I feel that crisp, crisp they're, khaki. I forgot how hard they are when you first buy them. Yeah. I, I've been wearing them, so they're nice and broken in now. That but crease just... <laughs> such a crease. Like... You could stand them up by themselves. Yeah. My favorite part about Dickies standing up is the pockets. You can put your, when you put your hands in your pockets of Dickies, you just look cool. Yeah. You look like kind of social. Hey, I don't care. Hey, but worst part, as soon as you sit down, everything's falling out of those jokers. Yep. I don't know how many times I get in my car when I was driving to school, shut the door, my, my 87 Mustang, just shut that door, sit down. And then you just hear clink, 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 clink. Mm-hmm. Or there's all my fucking change. John Mayer refers to that as the khaki tax. <laughs> you're, just, khaki tax. you're just paying the khaki tax. Yeah. I thought that was so funny when I read that. I was like, dude, that's so genius. Because, yeah, um, between my seat on the right side mm-hmm. and the console. Yeah. Quarters. Just tons <laughs> of guitar picks and quarters. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's all that's in a, there. A couple of tubes of chapstick. It's all there. Yeah. If I if I could ever turn my car upside down, I'd be a rich man. And shake it out. <laughs> yeah. It'd be a, it'd like be a $300 thing. in quarters in there. Yeah, totally. Well, we got to wrap it up, dude. No! Yes! Okay. I guess. So, yeah. Really excited about this show. You guys come see us. We'll uh, continue to plug it, release mm-hmm. more details. We got some other exciting things coming up. So, uh, hope to see you there. But for sure, we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.